I've enjoyed all the singing. But this is the most important part of the service, not because I'm standing behind this pulpit, because this is God's word Amen. that I'm sharing with you. And I feel like God has given me a message today for these gathering. I'd like to have your attention, if I could, for just a few moments. Uh, so I'm not going to hold you long, but I'm going to be reading out of the 26th chapter of Matthew Verses 36 through 39. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cut pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. Can we bow our heads for prayer? Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for sending Jesus to Calvary to die in our stead. Thank you, Lord, for salvation of our soul. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to assemble together in a great state, in a great nation, with great people. Lord, I just ask that you challenge us this afternoon as we share this message that you've laid on our hearts. And God, that we will be drawn closer to you. And God, my prayer is for revival in every heart of every individual here. And Lord, for those this afternoon who doesn't know you as Lord, I pray that you move upon them, that they may know you as Lord and Savior of their life. Let Holy Ghost conviction stir their heart and move upon them and cause them to come to an altar of prayer. For these things we ask, and the church said, Amen. You can be seated. I want to speak to you for a few moments this afternoon on the thought that the Lord placed on my heart. He went a little further. Jesus went a little further for you and for me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's give him a good hand clap of praise for doing that because he went a little further for us. Can I tell you, he went way out of his way for me. And I'm glad this afternoon that I know him in the free pardon of my sins, amen. And I know I'm on my way to heaven. I know the best is yet to come, amen. But you see, he reached further down than I could reach up. He loved me when I was unlovable. When I stumbled and fell, he picked me up, amen. When I was hungry, he fed me. When I was thirsty, he gave me drink. When I was naked, he came and clothed me. When I was sick and in prison, he came and visited with me. Because he has gone a little further for all of mankind. Amen. And it's time that we as Christians, it's time that we as individuals realize just how far he's gone. How far did he go for you? How far did he have to go to rescue you from the clutches of hell. I tell you today, we're privileged people. I said we're privileged people that we can assemble together in the outdoors and share the gospel story and sing songs of praise unto God and to worship God because he is a good God. He is a good God and he's an on time God. Amen. You see, he's got this thing in control. We read the news, we see what goes on in the media, and we think many times things are out of control. But I can tell you, according to God's word and what thus saith the Lord, he's right on time. I said God's right on time. His thing's about to wind up, and we're about to leave here. But the main thing is we need to have Jesus in our heart. I said you need to have Jesus in your heart. It's not how much you do for the Lord as far as work goes, but it's how is your heart with him. How is your heart with him? Is he the question today is not do you know Jesus? The question is does Jesus know you? 
because on that day, the Bible said there's going to be many, many is going to say, Lord, did not we do this in your name? Did not we cast out devils in your name? Did not we pray for the sick in your name? And he's going to say to many on that day, depart from me for I never knew you. I don't want to hear those words. I want to hear the words of well done thy good and thy faithful servant enter in unto the joys of the Lord. How far did he go for you? How lost in sin was you? How deep in sin was you when he found you and rescued you? Hey Amen. I can tell you for surety today, if it were not for the Lord, I'd probably be in one of these cemeteries or one of these prisons around here. But I'm glad that he went a little further for me. I'm glad that he sought me. I'm glad that he found me. You see, I didn't find him. I hear people all the time say, I'm glad I found the Lord. Well, I got news for you. He never was lost. We were lost. He found us. I said Jesus found us and he's given us hope. He's given us hope in this life. And I tell you, the best is yet to come. Amen. We walk around a lot of times like we've lost our best friend many times. We look at our society. We look at all the ills of the world. Look at all the problems that people are having. And we look at all the dangers that we face in America. But I'm here to tell you today, by the authority of God's word, the best is yet to come. But we have got to be ready for that departure. we got to be ready for that calling away, for that sudden coming. Because Jesus said, for in such an hour as you think not, I'm coming. I'm coming, the Son of Man's coming, amen. But people all over America, all over the world say, I've heard that in my life. I've heard that all my whole life. Well, Peter declared, he said in the last days, they say, there'll be scoffers. Where's the promise of his coming is what they say. We've heard that since our forefathers slept. Well, I'm here to tell you today, he's about to come. I said, the Lord is about to come and we need to be packed up, prayed up, and ready to go up. If we're going to hear that trump of God sound, if we're going to leave this ground and go home to be with him. You see, we're going to have, have to have a relationship and an experience with the Lord today. Amen. Amen. You see, if our Lord and Savior has done this for mankind, how much more should we do for others? You see, it's about others today. I said it's about others it is about the sinner. It's about the lost. It's about the drug addict. It's about the prostitute. It's about those who don't know the Lord as Savior. It's all about them. You see, Jesus came to seek and to save those who were lost. He's searching for the lost today. He's looking for the lost. But he went a little further. He went all the way to Calvary for you and for me. He knew what was before him. The Bible said it. He prayed until his sweat became as great drops of blood. There that day, think about it. Think about all he done for us. He took that journey up Cal Golgotha's hill through the streets of Jerusalem outside and up on Calvary's hill. They hung him and for six hours he hung there upon the cross. They spit upon him. They ridiculed him. They mocked him. They crucified him with two sinners on each hand and they drove spikes of nails in his hand and in his feet. He went a little further and we need to go a little further for our fellow man and for our fellow family and for those that are lost we need as individuals to go that second mile I've heard people say many times well I don't like to be used amen I've heard people say I would share the gospel but I'm afraid I'll get rejected well I have some news for you today they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting him. When you share this message, friend, they're rejecting the Lord. They're not rejecting you. And there's going to come a day the Bible said every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord because he's Lord today. And we need to realize that. My heart is overwhelmed. Amen. Reach out and touch someone for Jesus. That's what it's all about. Be a friend. Be a friend. You say, what is a friend, preacher? Well, I can tell you my definition of a friend. A friend is someone who comes to you when everybody else forsakes you. Did you hear that? 
I said a friend is someone that comes to you when everybody else forsakes you. When no one has time for you, that friend will be there for you. I can tell you, you've got a friend in Jesus. I said you got a friend in Jesus. And hey man, we need to realize that. We need to realize that. Reminds me of a story I once heard. Pastor got up and he told the people, he preached to the people, and he said, that's okay. He says, one of these days you're going to miss me when I'm gone. Amen. Story goes, the choir got up behind him and sung, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Hey man, you see, it's not how big our names go in the lights and the marquees. It's not about what type of automobile or home we live in or clothes we wear. It's all about Jesus. I said Jesus loves you and he cares for you and he went a little further for us. He went a little further for his disciples. He's going a little further for you every day that we live. He goes beyond that second mile. Amen. Our service should be unlimited to others. It's a about our friends, our neighbors, our families, the sinner, the sinner man, amen, the drunk man, the drug addict, amen. You see, we need to be willing to forgive. I said we need to be willing to forgive. Jesus forgave. He was persecuted, ridiculed, made fun of, talked about, amen. Went to be the guest with sinners because he loved that soul. You see, God loves sinners. I said, God loves sinners. He loves. He loves the sinner man, the sinner woman but he hates sin. We've got this thing wrong. I remember years ago when I first become a Christian as a teenager, long years ago, after I was in the church for a year or so, it seemed like if you laughed or had a good time, you wasn't living right. Amen. We tried to legislate holiness. We tried to say what was right and what was wrong, what you put on, what you took off, and all these different things. Now we've gone from one extreme to the other extreme, to where anything and everything goes. Are you hearing me? You see, Jesus said, the pure in heart's going to see me, amen. The pure in heart, those that have a clean heart, he's not looking at the outward man, but he does want the outward man to be in modesty. He wants us to live good lives. He wants us to do the best we can as Christians, amen. But we must be willing to forgive. There's so many that's carrying an ax, amen. They've been carrying an ax so long. They've been carrying grudges so long that they've lost their joy. I said they've lost the joy of the Lord down in their soul because they're still mad over someone or something that's happened 10 or 20 years ago. We must forgive. I said we must forgive. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, you've got to forgive not just seven times but 70 times seven. Right. Have we reached that mark yet? Or have we wrote someone off? Have we written people off? If we're going to keep the victory we got to continue to forgive others. I know it's not always easy. I know it's not easy many times to forgive when someone despitefully uses you or when someone does you wrong. But we must forgive. Well, I said we must forgive. Jesus forgive. He forgave. He forgave us. How many times has the Lord forgiven us when we fumble the ball and fail? How many times has the Lord come alongside of us and picked us up when we were down and out? How many times has Jesus touched us? How many times has the Lord 
Lord rescued us. How many times has he encouraged us? Because he's gone a little further for you. He's gone a little further for me and he'll continue to go. But we must as Christians, we must realize that we're not home yet. That we're in a battle. We're on a journey. And the devil is doing all he can to destroy us. And we got to tell ourselves, we got to keep on keeping on. I tell people quite often in my travels and places I go in this country and do revivals north and south and east, I tell folks I've never seen the like of the time when there are so many Christian folks that you see saddened, trodden down, depressed. Well, it's not God's will for us to walk around in depression, Sister Beverly. Because we've got the joy of the Lord in our heart. I said we've got the joy of the Lord in our heart. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can't go by the way we feel. We can't go by circumstances. But Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. He said, in this world you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Give him a hand clap of praise. He's already overcome the world. He's willing to go a little further, are we today? We need to quit living in the past. The devil wants to bring up our past constantly many times. He'll bring up your past. You see, we got to keep pressing on. I said we got to keep pressing on. We're on a journey. We're wayfaring strangers. We're pilgrims. And we have to keep pressing on until the Lord says, okay, come up higher. Until the Lord says, enough is enough. I'm giving you a promotion from this world unto this new heaven that I've called. He says, I'm my father's house or many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you can be also. He said not only that he said but if I go away he says I'm coming back. He says I'm coming back and we need to look for him. I said we need to look for his return. He said behold I come quickly in a moment in the twinkling of an eye he's coming. How about it today? Has he gone a little further for you? Has he gone a little further? Amen. I look in the scriptures as I see the Lord's traveling journeys while he was up on the face of the earth. In the book of Mark's, or John's Gospel, chapter 4, there was a little woman there that needed Jesus. She needed the Lord and she was at Samaria. Amen. The Bible said that Jesus said it's needful that I go to Samaria. He went out of his way to go to Samaria. And after he got there at Jacob's well at noontime, he knew this lady was coming because the other ladies would come earlier in the morning before the 12 o'clock hour because all the people that were probably unclean would go at the 12 o'clock hour. But Jesus knew that this lady was coming to draw water from the well and he began to speak to her as he said to the disciples of town to buy meat. He began to talk with her. He says, give me a drink. Amen. And she said, how can you have a drink? I can give you. He said, I can give you some living water that you'll never thirst again. I don't know about you, but that's what this society needs. That's what my neighbors need. That's what my friends need. That's what my family needs. They need that living water. We need that living water that only Jesus can give us that'll come down and flood our soul and touch us in our spirit that draws us and causes us to want to be in his presence. We need to be in his presence because if we're not in his presence, we can do nothing or go nowhere for the Lord. John Gospel chapter 15, he says, I'm the way. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He said, if you abide in me, you can bring forth much fruit. He said, but if you don't abide, if you don't abide in me, without me, you can do nothing. So we can do nothing without the Lord. It's about Jesus today. It's about the Lord of lords, the King of kings. Amen. We need to realize it today. 
that little Samaritan woman as she began to converse and talk with Jesus. Amen. She finally said, Lord, give me some of this water. And the Lord says today, amen, he spoke to her and told her, he said, you can have this living water. He said, there's coming a day when your fathers are not going to worship in this mountain, but they that's going to worship me is going to worship me and spirit and truth. This is one of the rare places in the scripture where you'll see that Jesus recognized and realized and told the folks, yes, I am the Messiah. Because he told that lady, I am the Messiah. Shall we look for another? Another no, amen. He's the only one. There's some people today trying to find a new way. But I'm hereby to tell you today, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And if we go, we're going to go through him. He is the only way today because he went a little further for us. I said he went a little further for us and reached down and touched us. He went out of his way for this lady. And the Bible says she got so excited that she forgot her water pots and she went back in to Samaria and says, come and see a man that's told me everything that I've ever done. Come and see this man, Jesus. Did he go a little further for you? You see, nobody knows what the Lord's done for you any better than you. That's why it's imperative. That's why it's so important that we tell others about Jesus. That's why it's so important that we have these street services because there's going to come a day when the Lord's going to say, he's going to say to people that walk up and down the streets, I've had people tell me before, some of my family that's drove by in our automobile and says, I heard you singing, or I heard you preaching. There's going to come a day when the Lord's going to say, well, what did you do? What did you do with my son Jesus? What did you do when someone was talking to you about Jesus? What did you do? Did you accept him or did you reject him? There's going to come a day when we're going to be accountable, when people's going to be accountable for what they do for the Lord and what they don't do for the Lord. I like the story of the good Samaritan as he was going along the, the Samaritan road. The thieves had beat this man up. This, this individual had beat him up and thrown him into the ditch. Amen. Left him for dead. Here come the priest by. He just looked at him. So well, I really don't have time. And, amen. Here comes a Levite by. He just looks at him and says, well, I, I would, but you know what? I don't have time. Amen. And then this Samaritan comes by. That, those folks that nobody wanted to have anything to deal with. He goes over and he pulls the guy up out of the ditch. And he begins to look at his wounds. And he begins to take oil and anoint his wounds with him. And he, not only that, he puts him up on his donkey. Amen. And he rides him in into town. And he takes him to the innkeeper. And he tells the innkeeper, he says, here, I want want you to put him up and on my way when I come back through if there's any more thing to his bill I'll go ahead and pray it. You see this good Samaritan I'll tell you what God honored him that day because he did what we're supposed to do. When God allows you and when God allows me to cross with someone else's path he don't allow us to do that for just happenstance he doesn't allow us to do that because it's just something taking place he's given you and me a divine appointment. A divine appointment, and we need to keep that appointment because God has given all of us those appointments with individuals. You say, well, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher. It doesn't matter. You're a divine, you've got a, it's a divine appointment. I told the church a Wednesday or so back, God has declared us as watchmen. We're all watchmen. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. It doesn't matter. God has appointed you as a watchman. And if you see a child about to hurt itself, you need to speak up and say something. I don't care if it's your child or not. If you see a neighbor going down the wrong road, you need to warn them. Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to tell people. Because you know what? If we don't warn them, their blood's going to be required on our hands. If you want to read the story in Ezekiel, go read it. But if we warn them, then what their blood is not going to be on our hand. So the next time 
God gives you a divine appointment and you say, Lord, do you really want me to go? And you feel something jumping in your heart, speaking in your mind and your spirit. You better think about you're a watchman. We're watchmen. Hey Amen. God gave you that appointment that you might could rescue someone from the flames of hell. All we got to do is do what the Lord tells us. We don't have to read and know what the Bible says. We need to just tell people what he's done for us. We need to tell people how far he went from us. I said he went a little further. He went a little further for the disciples. He's gone a little further for the church. And we need to go a little further for others. Others. It's about others today. We don't know when we're going to pillow our head and not wake up. That's right. We don't know when we're going to be in church for the last time. A month ago tomorrow, I checked on my mother-in-law who had been living with us for six years and two months. Four o'clock in the morning, she was asleep. My wife goes in at seven, and she'd gone out to be with the Lord. You say, well, she was 102 years old. It doesn't matter. When we lose a loved one, when someone's taken out of our midst, we're not really ever prepared. We're not really ever prepared. You see, God gives us appointments. And when he gives you an appointment, that individual you're talking to be, could be getting their last appointment, could be getting their last sermon. That's why it's important that we be submissive to the Lord and realize how far the Lord has gone for us. How far have we gone for Jesus? Think about it. How far do we go for the Lord? In closing, People criticize Peter a lot. I've told folks I doubt if the Apostle Peter could have preached to this church today. Probably too many people would always say, oh yeah, you're the guy that denied him. You're the guy that denied Peter, that denied the Lord Peter. Yes, you're the one. Your speech betrays you. You can't get out of it. But you know what? Jesus loved Peter. He loved Peter. He went a little further for Peter. That night, he told Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. Oh, not me, Lord. I'll die for you, but I won't deny you. Don't ever say never. You see, life has a way of eating out the highs and the lows, but story long and short, when the rooster crowed the third time, Jesus walked by and he looked at Peter and those words went off in his mind. And the Bible said that Peter went out and he wept. Wept. He wept bitterly. Jesus went a little further for Peter. He told Mary, I want you to go tell my disciples and Peter. And Peter. You see, He's going out of his way for us today. Are you going out of your way for him? Are you going that extra mile for him? Or do you just do things when everything is kosher and everything is okay, it's easy? Are you going to serve him? When the trials and tribulation comes, is your mind made up? Can you say like Job of old said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? You say, oh, that's easy. Not unless you've been there. It's not easy. But I tell you, by the grace of God, we can make it. Shake hands with your neighbor and tell him, I'm planning on making it. Tell her, I'm planning on making it. I'm planning on making it, John. I'm planning on making it. My mind's made up, Marcy. 
I want to see Jesus. We're all pressing to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We haven't comprehended yet. We got to forget the past and look to the future. We got to go where God sends us. We got to say what God tells us to say. We got to be that witness for the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed.